Now that we know a lot of different rules for exponents, we're learning about exponential functions. So in this video, we're gonna look at what's the difference between these new exponential functions, which we'll introduce, and linear functions, which we've dealt with a lot. All right, so, so far in your algebra career, probably from pre-algebra all the way up to now, we've dealt with a lot with linear equations and linear functions. All right, so these are, when you graph them, they're just straight lines. And the most notable word that we use a lot when we're talking about linear equations is the fact that there's a slope, right? This is rise over run. All right, every single time I go over, I do that slope to get the next point on my line. All right, this slope is added to your output every single time you change the input. All right, so if I was at one here and two here, and my slope was four, I had to get the next output, I'd add four, and the next output, I'd add four, and so on. So the basic thing I wanted to get from this slide is that linear equations have to do with adding each step. All right, so if I had this table, and I know it's a linear function, how can I concrete, or how can I uh, complete the table? Well, I know for a linear function, every single time I go to the next step, I have to add that specific number. So how do I get from six to two? I have to add negative four. Also subtracting four, it means the same thing. So linear functions have this constant change known as the slope that we're adding. So to go from the first step to the second step, I have to uh, subtract four. So I'm gonna do the same thing every single step. Right. So the next step I'd take two and I would subtract four and I would get negative two. Then I'd subtract four and I'd get negative six. And the next step, I'd subtract four and I'd get negative 10. Next step, I'd subtract four and get negative 14. All right, so linear functions, you're adding or subtracting. Subtracting is just adding with a negative. Uh, the same thing every single time. And then what would our uh, function be that models this data? Well, we know linear equations are y equals mx plus b. And the last slide, this thing that we're adding is the same as the slope. So the m, which is the slope, is gonna be negative four. b is our y-intercept is when x is zero, which is right in the middle here, is gonna be negative two. All right, so this is the table for the function y equals negative four x plus negative two. You can even check, because if I say tried x equals three, negative 12 minus two, which is negative 14. And I get the same thing that I got there. All right, so this is the function that models that table. All right, so consider the following scenario. All right, there's a zombie outbreak. And on day zero, there are three zombies in the world. All right, so on day zero, there's three zombies in the world. That is this part of our table. And each day, the zombie horde doubles in size. All right, so let's complete this table for the number of zombies. All right, so on the first day, if there's three zombies and it doubles, there's now gonna be six zombies. All right, the next day, it's gonna double, so there's six zombies, now there's gonna be 12 zombies. There's 12 zombies, and now it's gonna double, it's gonna be 24. And again, you can see the pattern, just doubling each time. The next day, there'll be 48. And on the fifth day, there'll be 96. All right, so this doubling has happened. Is this a linear equation? The answer is no, because the difference in the first day to get from three to six, I have to add three. All right, to get from six to 12, I have to add six. 12 to 24, add 12, and so on. So you can see I'm not adding the same number every single time, so this is not linear. But what am I doing each time? All right, if you're doubling something, you're multiplying by two. So every single step, I'm multiplying by two to get to the next one. So instead of adding, I'm multiplying. And what is our formula gonna be? Right, on the first day, there's three zombies. And then for every single day, I'm multiplying by two. So I wanna multiply it by two, and then multiply it by two, and then multiply it by two, depending on how many days there's been. Well, this repeated multiplication, we have a shortcut of writing, and that is an exponent. All right, so this is what the new types of function we're gonna be talking about look like. All right, we have this variable, in this case for d for the number of days it's been, in the exponent, and that's why they're called exponential functions. All right, so here's the definition. All right, an exponential function, all right, so this is a new type of thing that we're talking about. 
it's a function of the form a times b to the x. All right, so in our last case, this was 3 times 2 to the x. All right, 3 represented the zombies on the uh, starting point, the zeroth day. So this a here is going to be the initial value, which is where we start out. And b is known as, oops, b is known as the base of the exponential. So it's nice that b stands for base. But it's the number that you multiply by. All right, so b is the oops, number you multiply by. All right, so linears and exponentials are very similar, with one key difference. All right, with a linear function, I have this constant uh, that I add every single step. With exponentials, I have this constant that I multiply by every step. So it's just addition and multiplication create these two different uh, phenomena. All right, so first, if we're looking at a scenario and we want to know if it's linear or exponential, we ask ourselves, am I adding or subtracting? So let's see if it's this uh, table represents a linear equation first. All right, so if it's linear, I'd have to, to get from 16 to 8, I have to subtract 8. To get from 8 to 4, I have to subtract 4. 4 to 2, subtract 2. And these numbers are different, so this is not linear. Right, linear functions, you add the same thing every single step. So now let's think about multiplication instead, because that's what we have to do for exponentials. To get from 16 to 8, I have to divide by 2. But if I want to think about it as multiplication, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Right, 8 to 4, I can multiply 8 by a half. 4 to 2, multiply by a half. Multiply by half, one times a half is a half. So you can see each stage I'm multiplying by the same number, which means now my equation is my starting value is 16, and the thing I'm multiplying by is one half. Right, so that is a function that models this data. All right, now we're gonna look at scenarios where you have some type of word problem, and really the only thing you have to think about is am I adding the same thing every single time? or am I multiplying by something? That'll tell you if it's gonna be linear or exponential. All right, so you currently have 500 saved in an account. You add another 25 each month. So every month, I'm gonna add the exact same amount. All right, so this should be a linear equation. All right, you're adding the same thing every time. The slope is the thing that you're adding. So in our case, the thing I'm adding is $25. The y-intercept, the b, is where you start out, which in our case is 500. All right, so that is a linear equation that models this scenario. If I saved for 10 months, I'll just put a 10 here, and I would know how much money I have. There are currently 1,500 wolves in Yellowstone. Each year, the population grows by 4%. All right, so percentages are a big thing that are going to come up in this unit. All right, just say we do the first year. All right, the first year, how do I figure out how many wolves there's going to be? Well, I'd have 1,500 wolves. If they grow by 4%, it's kind of a weird thing with percentage. If they grow by 4%, I'm going to have the 100% of wolves that I currently have. And then extra 4% means I'm going to have 104% of the wolves I had. All right, so if you're confused with per, uh, percentages and stuff, let me know. Uh, but the basic idea is... To figure out how many wolves I'm going to have the next year, I need to multiply by 1.04. Right, the way to convert from this percentage to a decimal is you just move the decimal point over twice. And that would give you some number. All right, but you can see I'm multiplying to figure out what the next year of wolves is going to be. And the next year after that, I have 4% more wolves, so I'd multiply by 1.04 again. The year after that, I'd have 4% more wolves. And you see each stage I need to multiply to figure out how many wolves I'm going to have. So this is going to be an exponential function. I'm starting out at 1,500. And every single time I'm multiplying by 1.04. Right, so this is the model that represents the growth of these wolves. All right, there are currently 2,500 bacteria in a petri dish. The number of bacteria will triple every hour. All right, so try to create this function on your own. All right, so the first big question is, so are we looking at an exponential function or a linear function? All right, if I'm tripling, 
that means I multiply it by three. All right, so if I'm multiplying by three, it's gonna be exponential. I, I start out at the 2,500 bacteria, so that's my starting point, and the thing I'm multiplying by is the triple, it's three. All right, so this is the exponential function that represents this scenario. All right, so for this uh, learning objective, you're gonna have to do a skill check. All right, the skill check is gonna have four problems total. All right, the first problem is you're gonna have to create an equation from a table, so we did uh, an example like that. So the table is filled out. You have to determine if it's linear or if it's exponential based on the change and then create the equation. And the other two problems are going to be a scenario, whether it's population increasing or cost increasing. And just ask yourself if I'm adding it's linear, if I'm multiplying it's exponential. All right, but the practice problems are there to kind of prepare you for the skill check. And it'll be really similar to the practice problems.